page five for Honors Algebra 2 Factor Fest. Um, so this, we are going to factor each polynomial directly or with a method of substitution. So um, <clears throat> we're not going to use substitution just yet. Uh, it's not a, it, it, is, it is in standard form. Remember, we have to put these in uh, standard form. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Is it a binomial square or a difference of square? No, that's not a perfect square. So four, technique four is A times C. Uh, so we're going to do A. A is one. A is one. C is negative 10. So we get negative 10, one and 10 factors. The signs are different. Bigger is negative. So we get negative 9 and negative 3. My middle term is negative 3. So I'm going to use these two values. And that gets me to x to the fourth plus 2x squared. Remember that variable is always going to be that variable. Minus 5x squared minus 10. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We're going to factor out an x squared. You get x squared plus 2. Factor out a negative 5. You get x squared minus plus 2. Excuse me. And we see that x squared plus 2 and x squared minus 5. These are not differences of squares. So that would be my solution. I can't factor that any further. Uh, 62. Again, we're going to go through that hierarchy. Standard form, yes. Common factor, no. Perfect square, no. Uh, so we will use A times C. A is 1. C is negative 48, which gives us negative 48. Factors of 48 are 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, and 6 and 8. Signs are different. That's the only way we can get a negative, and my bigger is going to be, I have more negatives than positives after my signs, my inside and out that are different. So negative 47, negative 22, negative 13, negative 8, negative 2, which one is equal to my middle is negative 2. So these will be my two terms. So I'll take a to the fourth plus 6a squared minus 8a squared minus 48. That's group. We're going to pull out an a squared. We get a squared plus 6. We'll pull out a negative 8. And we get a squared plus 6. So that's going to be a squared plus 6 times the quantity a squared minus 8. That cannot be factored. That is not the difference of squares because 8 is not a perfect square. 63. So I'm going to use the first time I'm going to use substitution. So I'm going to substitute the variable x to represent 3k minus 1. So instead of writing 3k minus 1, I'm going to write the variable x. And instead of writing 3k minus 1, I'm going to write the variable x. Now tell me, that looks a whole lot easier to factor than this noisy thing up here. That's intimidating. So we can do this, we can do the work A times C, right? Standard form, yes. Common factor, no. A times C. A is seven, C is negative eight. We get negative 56. Factors of negative 56 are one and 56, two and 28, three no, four and 14, five no, six, no, seven, and eight. So signs are different. Bigger this time is positive, and the signs have to be different. So we have 55, 26, 10, and one, and my middle term is 26. So I know I'm gonna use negative two and positive 28. Seven x squared minus two x plus 28 x minus eight. Factor by grouping, uh, I can factor out an x. I get 7x minus 2. I can factor out, um, I can factor out a 4, 
and I get 7x minus 2. I did it correct because I have a 7x minus 2 in both of those, and that'll leave me with x plus 4. Now, remember, where I had an x represented this expression, that binomial. So I'm going to replace it now. So where I saw an x, I'm going to replace it with 3k minus 1. So I have 7 times, instead of x, I have 3k minus 1 minus 2. And where I have an x, I'm going to substitute 3k minus 1 plus 4. So where I had the x, I'm going to put that piece of information. And now we simplify. We get 21k minus 7 minus 2 and we get 3k plus 3, and this gives me 21, whoa, 21k minus 9, and 3k plus 3. Now we're not done factoring, because we can factor this. There's a common factor, so make sure you're factoring, and there's also a common factor here. So I can factor out a 3 from the first one. That gives me 7k minus 3. And I can factor out a 3 from here, which gives me k plus 1. And we're going to put those two 3 times 3, which is 9, 7k minus 3, k plus 1. So that would be our final answer, which is a good one. I like the fact that you still had to factor uh, after. So that's a good one. Uh, again, we are going to use the substitution method. For x, we're going to substitute uh, 4x minus 3 with an x, which gives us 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. No common factor, no special case. So a times c is 6 times negative 3, which is negative 18. Factors of 18, 1 and 18, 2 and 9. 3 and 6. Signs are different. Bigger is positive. 17, 7, 3. That's my middle. So 6x squared minus 2x plus 9x minus 3. We can factor out a 2x. Gives me 3x minus 1. We can fact factor out a 3 and we get 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1 times the quantity 2x plus 3. Okay, now we're going to resubstitute that back in for my x's. So wherever I see x, I'm going to substitute 4x minus 3. So that looks like 3 times 4x minus 3 minus 1. And all we're doing, that 3 goes there, this negative 1 goes there, and the value for x goes here. And then that's 2 times the quantity 4x minus 3 plus 3. Let's simplify by distributing this 3 back into the parentheses, and by distributing the 2 back into the parentheses, which it, I don't want blue, I want my original. 12x minus 9 minus 1, and we get 8x minus 6 plus 3. Let's simplify that. 12x minus 10 and 8x minus 3. We can factor out a 2, 6x minus 5, 8x minus 3. And that is our final answer. So that substitution is a really efficient way, comfortable. You're back to feeling familiar with the factoring. So we're going to, again, we're going to substitute it in here for <coughs> cosine x. So my x value equals cosine x. And that would give me 20x squared minus 3x minus 2. And uh, no, we can't factor. It's in standard form. No common factor. We, again, are going to use a times c. a this time is a big number. 20. c is negative 2, so we get negative 40. And we got 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 
three no, four and 10, five yes, five and eight, six, seven, no. So signs are different, bigger is negative this time. And we get negative 39, negative 18, negative six, negative three. And this is my middle. So 20 x squared plus five x minus eight x minus two. And let's factor out a five x. We get four x plus one. Let's factor out a negative two and we get four x plus one. We did it correctly because these are the same. So let's factor that out. And when we pull it out, we're left with five x minus two, five x minus two. Now we're gonna substitute back in for our x, which was cosine x. So we get four cosine x plus one times the quantity five cosine x minus two. And there it is. Five is a coefficient. You will see that, yeah, you'll see it later on this year in, in Algebra 2, cosines and all that fun stuff when we graph sine waves. Natural log, so this is the natural log. We'll also see log, logarithmic work later on, but we will set x equal to the natural log of x. So this is 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. Um, is this the difference of squares? So it's in standard form. There is no common factor, but my spidey senses should be aware because nine is a perfect square and 25. That's three X, that's five and double it. Does that equal 30? Yes, it is. So this is a binomial square. So knowing that, that gives me three X plus five quantity squared. This sign is always gonna go here. So, okay, now we're gonna resubstitute that back, that natural log in. So we get three natural log X uh, plus five quantity squared would be our answer. Three is a coefficient of the natural log and that's something you will see a little bit later and getting familiarized with it. All right, um, so it tells you factor by grouping. We're gonna factor by grouping. We're gonna try this. Do we need to rearrange these terms? Don't know. This is sort of like a uh, trial and error. So I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna factor out a three Y. If I factor out a three Y, I get two X plus two X plus three. And if I factor out a negative five, I get two X plus three. So I did it correctly because these two are the same. So we get two X plus three and three Y minus five. So that factor by grouping did not need me to rearrange it. Um, that is not always gonna be the case. Sometimes the harder ones or the teachers will ask you to uh, rearrange them. So I'm always going to try with the order that they give it to me. And then if it doesn't work, then we'll rearrange it a little bit. So I'm going to factor out a 2B from here. And that gives me 5A minus 3. I'm going to factor out a positive 7. And that gives me 5A minus 3. I did it correctly because the items inside the parentheses, the binomials, are the same. And then I can factor that out. And I get 5a minus 3 times the quantity 2b plus 7. So these are pretty straightforward factor by groupings. Um, if we look at this one, so if we just do it straight up, uh, I can take out a 5. And I get 3 minus x squared. Okay and I can take out a P squared and I get negative three plus X squared. Um, okay, and well, let's see how can I make these. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative X squared plus three. And if I factor out a negative, I get negative five X squared minus three, okay. 
And if I rearrange this and write it in standard form, I get that same term. So that's okay. That worked. Cool. Um, so now I have the same thing, x squared minus 3 and p minus 5. I'm going to rewrite those in standard form. Um, oh, sorry, that's squared. I kept forgetting the squared. Sorry about that. And those are not the difference of squares, so that is uh, completely factored. So I didn't need to rearrange that one. Um, number 70. Um, well, this is somewhat tricky, so you could try factor by grouping. But what I always remember, number one is not only standard form and common factor, but 1a should be, is it simplified? Is it simplified? So we notice that we have two terms here. Now, do we have two terms because we wanted to? Oh, this is good. <laughs> oh, that was so silly. So uh, we are not going to simplify, but we, we can rearrange. So if we have 18x squared minus 8xz, I'm going to write those variables, and then plus, um, plus, uh, sorry, minus 45xz plus 20z squared. So what do we get? So if I do that and do these two, uh, I can factor out a 2x, and that gives me 9x minus 4z. And the second one, I can factor out a negative 5z, and that gives me 9x minus 4z. And those are the same, so 9x minus 4z times the quantity 2x minus 5z. So this one I had to rearrange a little bit. And... Uh, that was important because we couldn't factor just these two straight up. They would not produce, and let's just show that. that, that I should probably do that copy. Let's show that technique of that mistake. So if we do these two, so what can I take out? I can take out a 2, and that gives me 10z plus 9x squared. And if I look at these two, I can just take out a zx, so a negative zx, and that gives me um, negative 8 minus 45, or positive 8. So notice these are not the same, so I can't factor by grouping. So this did not work. Did not work. So try rearranging. Try to rearrange, which we did in <clears throat> the problem ahead of it. Uh, factor by any appropriate method. Um, okay. Um, well, I'm going to look at this. Because of this, this is minus a perfect square. So I'm going to see if I can turn this. Is this a binomial square? Can I write that as a square of something? Because then I could have the difference of squares. So is that a binomial square? And yes, it is. Because 4k squared and p squared gives me 2k plus p quantity squared. Minus 16. And that can be written as a square. So we can get the difference of two squares. There we go. And then... We have a squared minus b squared. Remember, that produces conjugates, a minus b, a plus b. So my a value is going to be this, and my, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, and my b value is going to be that. So if I plug that into a's, we're going to have 2k plus p, and then minus 4, and we're going to have 2k plus p plus 4. So we're plugging those each in for it. And then we're going to, um, that's actually in standard form. So 
That would be our answer for that. That's a good one. Uh, we're going to use substitution. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. Is this a binomial square? Yes, it is x minus 2 quantity squared. And now, remember, we substituted 2x minus 1 in for x. So I'm going to plug that in for it. So 2x minus 1 minus 2 quantity squared, which becomes 2x minus 3 quantity squared. Look how easy that was. I mean, if you looked at this to get go, did you see? That took like 10 seconds. So using substitution is, is really advantageous when you get good at it. So you have to recognize it. You have to look at it. Um, so let's look. We have four terms. Whenever we have four terms, you should be looking at difference of square or uh, factor by grouping. So we'd factor out an x. We get x plus y. We factor out a negative 5. We get x plus y and x plus y, x minus 5 would be my solution. Super easy. That was pretty straightforward. Um, now we're back to the other page, like page 3, I think it is. This is the sum of cubes. a cubed plus b cubed is my template. And remember that gives us a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared. So can I write this as a, yeah, 10 cubed is 1,000 x to the third plus 343. I think it's 7 cubed y to the third. So we can write that as 10x to the third plus 7y to the third. So now I have my a's and b's. My a value is 10x. My b value is 7y. And we would <clears throat> now plug it into that template where we see our a's. So we're going to have 10x plus 7y. That's my a plus b. Then we're going to have a squared, which is 10x quantity squared, 10x quantity squared, minus a times b, which is 10x times 7y, plus b squared, which is 7y quantity squared. So I'm just writing that out just so you can see it. Most students will do this mentally. So that'll give us 100x squared minus 70xy plus 49y squared. Woo! That is so good. All right. All right. That's page five. Page five of the Factor Fest.